What's up, guys? What's going on, man? I'm Paul. This is Pauline Theology's Daily Devotional, man. And we are diving deep into Genesis. We're on the last chapter, the first six verses, chapter 50, one through six. And uh, I have to apologize for not getting those videos out last weekend uh, or before last weekend, Thursday and Friday, man. I was packing up, getting ready to go. Grace is feeling a thousand percent better if you can, you know, if you can calculate that, man, if you go past 100 percent. She's feeling great. And we're back on the road trying to get to where we were up in the uh, Pacific Northwest so we can begin our ministry again. So be praying for that on that aspect and just be praying that Grace would be able to acclimate to the climate as we're going to be going from uh, being in a temperature controlled room to being in a normal or actually, I guess not normal, being in our van where we have to open the windows and dust and all this stuff could come in and just change all that stuff. So just be praying for that. If you could, we appreciate it. And just be praying for the ministry as we go to our first uh, one back, which is in, uh, I believe it's in next weekend and it's called uh, uh, whiskey and reggae. So we're going to go there, preach the gospel, hold chapel, help uh, um, people in their spiritual needs by God's grace and pray for them. But, um, yeah, be praying for that. But anyway, man, let's jump on back into what we're here for to help you trust in Jesus more every day by studying and uh, reading the scriptures, trying to understand who God is, trying to understand who we are in light of the scriptures, in light of him and then how to apply these truths to our lives. So uh, we're in Genesis chapter 50, verse one through six. If you haven't read, go ahead, and stop the tape, check it out, see what it has to say. And then uh, we will dive deep. But if you have already read it, man, no need to stop the tape. Let's jump on into it. So what's going on? What's happening? Well, Joseph, uh, well, actually, I guess Jacob has died. Israel has passed away after giving the oracles to his 12 sons, describing what is to be for the uh, the, the family, for the, the tribes of Israel. And uh, we enter into this chapter with Joseph just weeping over his father, crying, it says that he fell on his face and that uh, he uh, kissed him and he's just sad and overwhelmed. He just got his father back. It's been a couple of years, though, you know, and uh, his father has passed away. So he's um, he's sad. He's real sad. Uh, what's uh, unique about this, though, is that this may be a picture of the prophecy that, well, the word that God had spoke to. Israel when he told him to go back to Egypt that he's going to be all right he's like I'm gonna be with you in the land of Egypt you're going to increase your family's going to grow and he says Joseph will close your eyes and so this could be it is that Joseph is is on like leaning on top of his father as he has passed away and is, this is the closing of his eyes this is the the moment in which um, God has spoken to Israel about that he was glad to see so there we already get a picture of God's faithfulness and trustworthiness in his words to do as he said he would do. Uh, but after that, he goes and uh, Joseph goes and talks to the house of Pharaoh. And he's like, hey, tell Pharaoh, man, that um, my father made me swear that I would bury him in his grave back in the land of Canaan where I was. So if it's good, let me go back there and bury my father. And um yeah, after uh, he said that, Pharaoh was like, yeah, go ahead. And they, they uh, embalmed him or uh, wrapped him up. They did mummified him. They did whatever they did to preserve the body. And uh, then he asked that permission. And Pharaoh said, yeah, do, it, do as your father swore. One thing I've heard from commentators is that um, when Joseph said that he would return, this is a promise to help maintain and keep the, the land functioning because of the um, the devastation that happened with the famine and all that stuff. And he wants him back. And so uh, whenever Pharaoh answers, he doesn't say, yeah, go and bury your father and then return. He just says, go and bury your father, trusting in the word of Joseph. And so that's that's, that's a good thing for us to, to speak about is that allow people to trust the words that we say. But let's go ahead and talk about the, the way we answer. And we got the first question, which was what was going on. Let's go ahead and talk about who God is. And then we'll go into uh, who man is in this. And so who is God? Well, he's a promise keeping God. He said that Joseph would close the eyes of his father, Israel. And 
that is what it seems to have happened in this case where he is crying and weeping and kissing his father after his death. So the words of God are true. And we talked about in an, an, another episode and I also did a little short um, um, video on it. And you can check that out. But the word debar, whenever it is used for God in uh, the Hebrew language, we often translate it as promise when really it just means speak. It's because the words that God speaks are always going to be fulfilled. And it is a promise. And so God's promises are being seen here. They're being displayed. Uh, they're being fulfilled as Joseph is crying over um, his father. But also that, that God is present with his people. So Pharaoh didn't have to let uh, Joseph go or allow him to do the thing that he promised or swore to his uh, father, but he does. And I believe it's because he has favor on Joseph because of God. Uh, earlier we saw, he says, man, uh, who is a man so wise and, and uh, um, able? And that's, that's Joseph because he has God with him in all these, on all the ways and all the things that he does. What is this saying about man? Well, it says to be faithful to your word because Joseph is doing two things. He's faithful not only to his father and speaking to Pharaoh about bringing his body back to Canaan to bury him where he had desired to be buried, but he is also um, faithful to his word in the fact that Pharaoh would believe Joseph when he says he will return. So be faithful to your word or a man or a woman of integrity. Be of integrity that when you say something, people believe you because that's what you do. So how do we apply these truths to our lives, man? Check yourself. Uh, you know, they say check yourself before you wreck yourself. But check yourself, man, and see that if what you speak and what you do line up with your character. Uh, do we act the way that we talk? Are our words true when we speak them? I think that's uh, important, man. Jesus says, let your yes be your yes and your no be your no. Is that the way it is for us? Sometimes in the past, I used to stretch myself thin and having the desire to do something, I would say, yes, I'll do that. But realizing that I have too much uh, things already going on and that I really wasn't able to be any help in that situation. And so I was lying not to lie because I didn't want to do it, but because I had overcommitted myself and so I want to ask the question to you, are you doing those things, those small little things in your life where it's not necessarily something that you aim to commit to do, but it happens. So just allow yourself to realize and see that your yes is yes and your no is no. Hey, I appreciate you guys for listening and I will see you guys in the next episode.